Now, recently we had an election, and you probably heard in the news, on TV or the radio all the time, they were making statements like the following. Obama is leading McCain by 50% to 46% with a margin of error of plus or minus 2 percentage points. What the heck does that really mean? Well, what that means is they really don't know exactly for sure that Obama is getting going to get 50% of the vote. They're saying he's going to get pretty close to 50% of the vote. How close? Well, they think it's within plus or, two, uh, plus or minus 2 percentage points. So what that means really is that they're pretty sure that Obama is going to get anywhere from 48% to 52%. 2% below 50 up to 2% above 50. And at the same time, they think McCain is going to get something close to 46%. That is something from 44% up to 48%. Well, notice that these two numbers are the same. So, in this case, and sometimes they would say this in the news, that they would say that Obama and McCain are really at a statistical tie. Because statistically, Obama really could be at 48, and McCain really could be at 48, and therefore be in a tie. It's all based on this idea of margin of error. And we're going to see that the size that a sample has to be is influenced very much by the margin of error. All right. What are some things that you should already know at this point? All right. You should know that when we talk about a confidence interval for a population proportion, we use the letter P to represent this population proportion. And you should also know that when we form a confidence interval, we start with the information we get from the sample, specifically the proportion of the sample, and we call that P hat. And what we do, we form an interval by going below p hat and above p hat. And these are all in percents. These are all percent values. The amount that we go above p hat and below p hat is called the margin of error. So we go from p hat minus e all the way up to p hat plus e. And we form this interval as a percent. And we say we are pretty sure that the actual population proportion is somewhere between p hat minus e and p hat plus e. Where is it? I don't know. It may be down closer to the low end. It may be up at the high end or maybe in the middle. But we know it's someplace, and we're pretty sure that it's someplace in this interval. Okay? Now, we can have a really big interval which really doesn't tell us a whole lot. For example, if I made the state, statement that, uh, yeah, my, my population proportion is something between 10% and 90%. Well, that's a pretty worthless statement, obviously. So a big confidence interval is pretty worthless. The smaller the confidence interval, the better. That is, the smaller this margin of error, the better. How, how good is good? Well, as I said, you know, most of the time in the news you hear me either talking about plus or minus two percentage points or maybe sometimes three percentage points. Every now and then maybe four percentage points, but usually not beyond that. If we can get it down to plus or minus two percentage points, that's pretty good. But what do I mean get it down to that? How can we, how can we affect how big our margin of error is? Well, let's talk about that. The margin of error, E, is calculated, calculated for a proportion with the following formula. It is the critical value Z sub alpha over 2 times the square root of P hat, the proportion from the sample, times Q hat, its complement, divided by N. And all this is inside the square root sign. And of course, N is the size of our sample. Well, let's see what really has much effect on the margin of error E. As this number gets bigger and bigger and bigger, it causes, because we're multiplying by that, it causes my margin of error to get bigger. That is, the higher confidence level that I want causes me to have to go out more in either direction from P hat. 
if I want to if I want to be at the 90% confidence level, I have to go out. We said that was 1.64 standard deviations out. If I want to be 90 5% confident in my answer, that means I have to encompass 95% of all possible values, and we would accomplish that in, in a distribution by going out 1.96 standard deviations, where, where this really is the standard deviation. We said that for 98%, we go out 2.33 standard deviations, and for 99%, we said we go out 2.575 standard deviations. So these are typically the, the four values that are used for z sub alpha over 2 for the corresponding confident levels. Well, as you can see, these, these numbers really don't vary that much. Anywhere from just a little bit over 1.5 to, to a little bit over 2.5. Not a whole lot of variation here. So as, as Z changes, it's not going to have that big effect on my margin of error. All right, what else can affect my margin of error? Well, this product right here, the product of P hat and its complement Q hat. These two numbers multiplied together are the numerator. So as this product gets bigger, that makes this square root get bigger. What makes this whole value get bigger, which of course makes my margin of error bigger. Well... Let's, let, let's examine a couple possible uh, example values for p hat and q hat and see what their product is. So here, here's, a, here's a worst case. Say, say we've got uh, the probability of success or the, the probability, um, or looking in terms of proportion, the proportion of my sample, let's say is 0.9. 90% of all the people in my sample believe one way or the other, okay? Therefore, q hat would be 0.1. When I multiply these together, I get 0.09. Kind of small. Let's go one step further. Let's take it even more extreme case. Let's say 99% of all the people in my sample are in favor of one thing. That means only 1% would not be in favor. And when I multiply that out, I get 0 0.0099. Okay, so that, that's about as small as the number I'm, I'm going to get. So let's take these and let's, let's work this now toward 0.5. If I have 0.8 here, this is 0.2. Multiplied together, that's 0.16, which is quite a bit bigger than either one of those. So I keep working. Let's jump up to 0.6, and this complement will then be 0.4. Multiplied together, that's 0.24. And hopefully you're seeing that as we go to 0.5 and 0.5, that gives me 0.25. If I now go to 0.4 and 0.6, don't I just have really 0.4 again? So I'm really, at this point, at 0.5 and 0.5, I'm at the biggest number I can get when I multiply those two together. I can't get anything bigger than 0.25. Well, how much how much does 0.25 vary from 0 0.0099? Well, that's only a, a difference of factor of 25. Okay? And that you say, well, that's a pretty big difference, right? A lot bit bigger than it was a difference in my Z scores, uh, my Z sub alpha over two values. But is that, is that the biggest possible thing that affects my margin of error? And I claim no. Look at this. N is my sample size. And since it's in the denominator, as my sample size gets bigger, that makes this fraction get smaller. Therefore, the square root is smaller. Therefore, it makes my E value, my margin of error, smaller. So the more I have in my sample, the smaller margin of error I have. Now, let's see. What are the possible values for n? Well, gee, I mean, n, my sample size, I suppose I could have a sample size of, of 5, couldn't I? And gee, I could also have a sample size of 5,000. That's a huge difference. So I claim that of all these three possibilities, my z sub alpha over 2 values, my product of my p hat and q hat, or n, and by far has the biggest effect on the size of my margin of error.